Hello and you're very welcome to another Shit Jamrock Podcast. I'm John Mann. Of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgrets.com and the Tactic D. Use the promo code Jamrock Podcast to get 15% off on orgrets.com. Get the best skins, goals, equipment on Tactic D. Be attacked by this. And Stephen, I'm joined by former Cavan footballer Ronald Flanagan to talk about this weekend's Talta Cup final between Cavan and Westmead. So it's in HQ, Croke Park, this Saturday at 3 pm. So we're really looking forward to it. And uh, it's it's great to be back. Third trip up to Croker of the year. So it's uh it's a nice position to be in, and I'm joined from uh, joined by Ronald Flanagan from a lovely Galway. So, how are you keeping, my man? All good, yeah, all good. Uh, looking forward to the weekend. It's great to be to be to be heading back as you said to Crow Park, and then another big game coming after in the All Ireland semi final. So, yeah, it's exciting times for Calvin. It absolutely is, my man. Yeah, like, and I suppose if you're kind of thinking the start of the year, as I said to a couple of lads earlier on, like you know. I suppose one Croke Park appearance is more than likely guaranteed, I suppose, the league final, won the league final, Division 4, and then whatever was going to happen after that. So third time ain't bad, Rory. No, no, it's great. It's great. It's great exposure. And, and all them lads deserve it. They've put in a massive few years, and you can see it in, in their bodies, uh, the, the strength and conditioning that they have behind them. Um, they deserve to be in Croke Park and, and getting there on regular uh, occasions. And this was next year, moving on from it, please God, we'll, we'll win it this year. We'll be pushing on to the the Sam Maguire and, and get back again there for, for quarterfinals and hopefully semifinals. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I suppose uh, before we kind of, kind of touch on uh, to the Calvin game this weekend, obviously they, they talk about the Tallinn Cup and so it's Calvin's year maybe as a whole. Um, obviously Kassaran, um are in the Intermediate Championship this year and obviously going to win that and you go straight back up, obviously Brian Dunne, who's uh, leading the charge for his this year. So have you been um, going to many of the Kassaran games so far this year? Yeah, I've seen a few of them, yeah. Um, they've been varied, I suppose. At times you look very good, at times you look very bad. Um, a few, I suppose, a few injuries. We need to have everybody available to us um, to be able to, to I suppose, to really play it to the best of our ability. And it'll be the same in the Intermediate Championship. If we, if we don't have everybody, then life will become very, very difficult. Uh, but we'll be there, thereabouts, I imagine. He's good. Absolutely, absolutely. Obviously, looking ahead, kind of to the intermediate championship, you've you've many teams in it, and obviously, likes of Ballyhays will be going for it once again. Like they've been knocking on the door the last couple of years, and you have Hugh Collins and yourselves, and lots of teams going for it this year again. Uh, Rowan, so look, obviously, the Castron lads will look for the direct route again. But as you were kind of saying off air, it won't be easy as that. No, no, definitely not. No, as I said, we we have to definitely keep everybody on the pitch. Make. Uh, Make sure that Brian has all the the, the deck to choose from. Um, if, if we do have all that, then I I, I would think that would be very hard bet. I have to say, I'm very impressed from what I've seen from Bally Hayes. Um, they're in actually the, the Division One League semi final at the moment, so yeah, they're they're a quality side, and it'll they'll take beating by by anybody really. And obviously Brian Dunne, who uh, taken the gauntlet after Donald Keogh and stepping down last year. So I suppose much kind of talk about Brian. He also obviously is a quality manager. He led Ballina to the intermediate in 2020. So he, he, the track record definitely speak for itself. Yeah, and I know from just chatting to the Ballina lads, he's, he's a good bit of crack and they all enjoyed the trainings and and, and, and the time with him. Uh, so far, so good. But the sound of the thing, Cash and I don't hear too much. Uh, once, you leave the, once you leave the ship, it's... It's, it's closed doors and you don't you don't kind of get that information that you would have got when you're in in, in the in the bubble but um yeah by, by all accounts everybody's happy Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. And obviously, uh, go on to the, uh, um, the Intermediate Championship at the end of July and start of August. I suppose we, we were kind of chatting off air and it's probably like trying to crack the Da Vinci Code uh, to see who's going to win the senior and the intermediate and obviously the junior. But um, early kind of shouts maybe for the senior championship from your point of view. Again, I've suppose I've seen a few league games. I, I think if they're probably a dark horse, and not many people have been talking about them. I think if Cavan Gales get all their players, they'll, they'll be extremely hard bet. Um, Christian Law, I suppose, with James and Paddy and, and Dara coming back, uh, going into the team that's already there. Again, they'll be really, really hard bet. Um, and then, I suppose you look at Rammers, who have won it last year and have been consistently good over the last three, 10 years. Uh, Sean McAvoy I feel would be a huge loss to them he brought serious X Factor last year so probably w- one of the three of them I- I'd be going for and if it's going an outside chance I'd be going for Cavan Gales but it's hard to look past Chris Law if, if Darren McBeady and James and Paddy Lynch on the same team 
Yeah, and obviously, you know, Rammer have had an unbelievable kind of league campaign, went unbeaten in all the games and all the, all the go to like a league semi final against the Gales there in a couple of weeks' time. So I think the Division One league semi finals will be really interesting, making a paint picture for the championship as well, Ronan. So it's going to be a very interesting championship from, from I suppose, all um, age groups, from um, obviously senior, intermediate, and junior. Yeah, yeah, and that'll give a good indication of where teams are at. We always felt that it was a good. It's good to have the league over with, and it's a good lead into the championship if, if you win, let's say, a, a league final. Um, as I said, when all those teams get their county players back, uh, they become much stronger of a team, and the grammar get Liam Brady back, but that's all they get back. Uh, whereas Cavan Gales are getting a good few back, and Chris Albee getting a good few back, Gowan getting a good few back. It, it, things will become much much tighter, and probably, I suppose, Rammer won't be winning by as, as convincing margins as, as they haven't winning by. So, yeah, it definitely give us a good indication of, of who's on the right road for the championship. Absolutely, yeah. And I suppose, obviously, kind of like leading into that, like, and obviously, you, you've gone to a few Castorahan games, I suppose, rolling, like, keeping a good eye on things, and obviously, your brother ended uh, flying with the Castorahan lads. Like, you, you, like, the games that you did go to, like, have you been impressed maybe by the kind of club standards in Cavan at the minute? Yeah, yeah. Um, very attacking brand of football that's been played at the moment. Now it's it's very, I suppose, easy easy to be attacking when it's league football. Um, but it's good to see. Uh, teams are, are really kind of going at it. And yeah, it's been great. It's been great. It's, um, as I said, it's, it's it's mainly based on attack, which is a, a nice thing for the spectator because you see lots of scores and lots of chances being created. So yeah, so far so good then. Yeah. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff, and hopefully it can lead to a good uh, Cavan senior team. And obviously the players are kind of breaking onto it, so it'll be brilliant to have a good uh, Cavan club championship. And we'll uh, we look forward to it. And so yeah, we we can kind of crack into the uh, Talco final this weekend. Obviously against Westmead, and obviously we were talking off air. You've been to lots of the Cavan games all year, Ronan. So obviously we we got up um, from Division Four, we won Division Four, we're up to Division Three next year. And so what have you made of most the Talco Cup um, performances and games? We've obviously played Fermanagh and Down and um, Slide as well so obviously great wins and obviously now the result of all that's a final against what's made this Saturday so were you impressed by the Total Cup performances or? Yeah definitely yeah um, no matter what team goes in front of you you have to beat them um, doesn't matter where, where they're at or position 3, 4, 2 wherever it is um, you, have to, you have to put them away so yeah so far so good um, the lads are as I said at the start they're in physical brilliant condition Um like you can see the, the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years conditioning on them. And that, that, that stands to the team, especially over time. You, know, you get to 40, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Our lads are the hits they've put in, the tackles they make, the runs that they're making. It, it, it's having an impact on the other teams. Um, you, can, you can see it. Like, and so far, I feel we've been comfortable. Yeah, even in the Sligo game, I know we gave them goal chances, but I felt there was, there was probably another gear or two in us had they got a goal. Uh, we felt like we were kind of in cruise control. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with that. And obviously, the first day out you had um, down in Brackley Park, and obviously Ray Gallagher had a oh, like a star study game that day, like a double save from a penalty, and just probably shot the lights out. And that's nearly it, it's weird to see if you say from a keeper, obviously Ray's exploits out the field obviously helps him a lot getting the points that he does get. So a very good performance against, I suppose, well a down team that has been in this raid last year or two, Ron. Yeah, yeah, it was um, a, a dangerous down team all the same because yeah. you still had Liam Kerr off the bench and you still had a few lads there who, who can really hurt you, Barry O'Hagan. Um, so we needed to make sure that we, we just kept the foot on the throat and so it's Raymond's freeze really helped that because when you felt like they were coming into the game, we just kept tipping the ball over the bar, over the bar, over the bar. And next thing you know, we were five, six, seven, eight, nine points ahead. Um, so people said down were poor, but without Raymond's freeze, and consistently putting the ball over the bar, they might have been that poor. And I suppose down missed quite a few chances that did too. So, um, all in all, it was it was it was a really good performance. But as as we did, uh, you have to keep the, the foot in the throat and, and making sure that you keep putting the ball over the bar to, to get rid of them. And I suppose obviously moving on to the Fermanagh game, like it, it was in Brewster Park, and I suppose out of all the games, you probably thought that I was going to be potentially banana skin. The lads had an unbelievable performance. Obviously, Thomas Gallon getting a goal win in the first minute. It's a very difficult place, as you well know, to go down to to put in a performance like that. And obviously, I was talking to Ryan McCluskey there today at, at around lunchtime, and he was saying that the Cavs lads were really well coached. They looked like they had a plan for absolutely everything. For man, we kind of thrown at them. So, you know, it, it was a great performance, and the blue them out of the water. 
Yeah, and as you just said, the, the initial uh, goal from Thomas was so important because typically for Man are a tough team to play against. They they kind of get the men behind the ball and uh, they just make life difficult. And I was I was fearing that we might come out of a 10-9 or 11-10 on the wrong side of it. But once the goal went in, it kind of put my mind at ease. And you know, I just felt that now for Man, I can't just sit back and, and, and wait for us. Uh, they have to actually play a little bit. And that was definitely going to suit us better. Uh, it wasn't going to be as much of a, a dog fight as they would have liked. Um, so the goals were crucial, and it's great to, obviously to get off to such a brilliant start. And I suppose as well as that, like with the performance we did kind of put down to Bruce the Park, and like obviously it is a very very tough place to go to, and many the time many battles you would have had down there. Like it's like it's like to put up that score to start so well to control the game the way we did. Like and obviously for Man, like it, it, I keep saying it, but it is a very difficult place to go to. Like like it does go to show when we do put the you know with the foot to the Foot to the pedal, rolling like we can play some brilliant football. Oh, we can, and we we show that again against Sligo. Um, the first fifteen minutes were outstanding. The points we kicked, the drive that we had from from the whole team uh, breaking forward, and then we kind of seemed supposed to maybe take the foot off the gas a little bit and not rest on our laurels, but um, just just kind of ease off a little bit, which which gave Sligo maybe a little bit more uh, momentum and it kind of brought them back into the game a little bit. As I said, I always felt we were. We were in control, but you'd like to just, I suppose, get rid of them fully when you are getting rid of them. And, and that's what I felt we did with Fermanagh and Down. We just we kept the foot on the troll all the time. Whereas Sligo, I suppose, had sneaks of, of, of chances that could have changed the game. They didn't. Um, but, yeah, I, I just like us to kind of be a bit, a bit more clinical when we do get the six, seven points ahead, just to keep, keep that distance and, and, and more if possible. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, moving on to the Sligo game a couple of weekends ago in Crow Park, and we we know about the kind of the Sligo pr- probably are on the up under Mister McEntee, and we Pat's bland son was playing as well, and obviously as you were kind of alluding to, like the the goal chances Sligo did kind of have throughout the game, and we did get over the line eventually, and you know like have do like in a, in a lot of games like the, so was, they they kind of play well for like the first twenty odd minutes, and so was, it was a really barren performance, and obviously Paddy Lynch was kept very quiet, but what was your maybe thoughts on? The game. Yeah, uh, Paddy was quite yes for, for his standards. To be fair, um, he's been brilliant all year, um, and that's maybe I suppose it, it maybe it shocked our lads. I suppose we've been kind of heavily relying on Paddy to to get the scores uh, for us. So yeah, I suppose it, it, look at looking forward, if Paddy's marked tight again and, and, and we're struggling, then we, we need we need more ball going into James. And I just felt that we probably didn't give enough ball to James Smith, um, like. James is a midfielder for Schlaw, could play midfield for Calvin if you want to really. Um, but he, he's a serious option for us to, to actually win ball inside. And I, I don't know, I just felt after a while we kind of we stopped even looking. Uh, it was kind of more ponderous. And there's probably no point in really having James inside if we're not actually going to look to kick the ball into him. Um, and the same with Paddy, but especially James, because he is such a ball winner. And I think he'll be crucial this weekend because I don't I don't see that. Plus me have two full backs in their full back line. They have two cornerbacks and they have a, a full back. So if the full back marks Paddy Lynch, then to me there's there's a mismatch straight away on, on James. And it's a matter of getting that mismatch. Um if Paddy even has to move out to the corner or out to the half hour line and getting the ball in on top of James, which we did against Donny Gall. And it just shows how good James can be. And even against Antrim as well, it just good shows how good James can be inside if the ball is given into him. But it's if you start with the ball and more than anybody, he's, he's not going to be that effective. And he's not going to be coming on the loop. He's not a your natural, I suppose, corner forward, but like Paddy Beard to come on the loop trying to get points. Oh, James is primarily a, win, a ball winner. So play to his strengths. Look, look, look inside, kick the ball. And if it is on, then let's give him the ball. Yeah, I think that'll have to be utilised, as you have rightly just said, on, on Saturday against Westmead. Like, if he's there, use him, I suppose, is the best thing. And I suppose, like, the Sligo performance and... You know, like Char- Sean Carbine, if, if my memory serves correctly, was in for a great goal chance. And, you know, I, I don't know, the, the Cavan lads maybe switch off at times. And maybe did we expect that attack and prowess from Sligo? And they, they did have a lot of goal chances. So we can't be at that this Saturday, Ronan. Yeah, we, we did look vulnerable. Yeah, at, at times look vulnerable um, in our defence. Um, and also, I would say Westmead looked vulnerable in their defence. So uh, that will hopefully bring an entertaining game. Please copy from my guy's side. But, but, uh, yeah, it's. I just feel that I suppose it, going into Sunday, we probably have the men to mark 
their men. I'm not sure if they have the, the men to mark ours. Um, I, if I was managing captain, which I'm not, obviously Mickey is, uh, would be looking at John Heslin and Ronan O'Toole and I'd be thinking, right, how do we take John Heslin out of the game? For me, you put Killian the Gunner on him because Killian is extremely disciplined um, in, in, his, in his job. He will focus totally on on, on taking Heslin out uh, and that is crucial because Heslin is a brilliant finisher and he, he's looking to come on the end of the attacks all the time, which is quite hard to mark if you're not tuned in to, to actually marking him. Um, Rowan O'Toole then, I thought he was brilliant against Offaly. He's, he's really kind of jinky, he plays centre half forward. Again, the two lads play centre, or sorry, full forward and centre half forward. Full backs and centre half backs are not known usually for their man to man marking uh, skills. So we might have to alter our defence a little bit, I think, to, to, to sort those two lads out. Uh, maybe the likes of Jason McLaughlin go man to man on, on Roma two at centre half back. And I, I I would move Killian into into full back on um on Heslin to do the man to man on him. And I think if you if you snuff them two lads out, I just don't see Westmead having enough scores to beat us without them two lads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. I suppose and I, I come away from the Sligo game where you relieved, where you kind of job done, and I, I look at the end of the day, semi finals are about. Like as you know yourself, from playing many semi final, they all they, they are all about winning. Yeah, as I said to you, I think off air, I never felt that we were going to lose the semi-final. Even though they had three, four goal chances, I always felt that, okay, if they scored one, it might actually inject us into third, fourth, fifth gear if we have to go there. I felt we were kind of a bit, a bit in cruise control. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was never really worried about, about the results. Um, you just wouldn't like them to get, I suppose, a late minute, a last minute goal that could end up beating you. Um, and then we wouldn't have the time to actually fix it. So it'd be important to kind of get rid of them a little bit earlier. But yeah, no, I, I wasn't. I wouldn't be worried coming out of it or, or, or relieved. Um, I'd be more thinking, okay, there's stuff to work on. We need to improve when teams do run at us down the middle of middle of our defence. How do we stop that? Uh, and probably work a little bit more, as I said to you there earlier, and getting the kick pass into into James and Paddy when we have the two big lads inside. We probably need to be using them more. But on the positive side, we ran the ball excellently, and there's probably one of the, f- the first times that we, we've got Garoge running at the goal with the ball passed over his head or two, two of them running at the goal. And you cannot stop Garoge when he's running at the goal. It doesn't matter who's marking him. Uh, he's he's a man mountain. He's two brilliant feet. If, if we can get him running towards the goal, um, Calvin would be extremely hard stopped. So that, that was definitely a positive coming out of the Sligo game. I felt that we got Garoge going at the goal, which is, as I said, Sligo couldn't deal with it. And I don't think Westmead or any team We'll be able to deal with that. It'll be very, very hard stopped. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're moving on to the game on Saturday now in Crow Park against like a very kind of like a, like a strong, strong West Me team. And I think a lot of people are saying, oh, like maybe they're not as good as people maybe think they are. But I think if you go through the team, you have lots of quality in Rowan and Wallace, Ray Cannell and Sam McCart and Rowan, o- Rowan O'Toole, as you rightly saying there. Luke Lockton's having a great year this year so far. We all know about the power and prowess that um, John Hedson has and Lorca Dolan to complete that team. So it's going to be a stiff test, Roland. It will. It will, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I feel that we have the advantage in the air. So the, the longer the ball stays in the air, the, the, the easier I think it will be for us. So in that, what I mean is like Raymond Galligan's kickouts, when he's, when he's kicking the ball out, I think we will be the dominant force in the air with Groge, with Thomas Galligan, uh, Killian Clark. We have the bigger men, even the Jerry Smiths, um, even James Smith, if he comes out. We have those options where I don't think they have the ball winning ability that we have. Um, so they will be under serious pressure. If we press really, really hard on their kickouts, they're going to be under serious pressure from kickouts on their side. And I feel that we will hopefully uh, be able to, to win our own ball off, off Raymond's kickout. Now, obviously, they'll be looking to just break the ball. I think they'll be looking to get the ball on the ground as, as often as they can. And as you said, they have loads of players that can play football. They can run, they can run, they can run. And against Offaly, they were just walking through them. There were so many runners coming and they showed their quality. They're well able to run. You said Ron Wallace coming from centre-half back. He's extremely dangerous. Yeah, yeah. They're running straight through the heart of the defence. Uh, and if we were as open as we were against Ligo, we'd run through us as well. So That's what I'm kind of saying, yeah. Yeah, I just think that if we can dominate the kick-out, so if we can win our own ball clean and if we can really put a hard press on their kick-out, they won't get those same opportunities to run through us. But if, if, if 
the ball if they let if we let short kick outs get out really easy and if if they break the ball on our kick out if our kick out isn't up to scratch then the ball becomes on the ground they're really good on the ground to be fair to them as I said the runners coming from everywhere and next thing you know we could be in bother because you'll have the Ronan Wallaces you'll have the Jamie Gnu you have Ray Canellan and you'll have all these lads coming streaming forward mm-hmm. and you still have Heslin uh, Luke Lachlan you have um, what do you call your man York and Dolan yeah, young Dolan, one or two, they'll all yeah. be looking for the shot off the loop. So yeah, it, the game becomes a little bit more tricky to, to, to manage if if we let them play on the ground. It's only until you look at the players now, like uh, uh, this is probably the only chance I've got to actually look at the team sheet. And I'm thinking, you know, there's a couple of fires to put out here. Yeah, no, there is, there is definitely. Um, but it, it, it can be as, and as Martin Corey is there with them, and I suppose he would have been big with us in. in Playing off the two kickouts, so focusing on our kickout, focusing on How our good kick-out. is Marty Curry, by the way? Sorry, Roland, just before you go on. Yeah, yeah, no, he was excellent yeah. with us. He was brilliant. Um, and and if he has as big an input as he had with us, he will be focusing on those two aspects because I think those two aspects are really important. Can we win our own kickout? Can we really press hard there? Because if we do that, where do, where are they getting the ball from? They they can't get the ball. They can't really get like they they might get the odd turn over here and there. But they're living off scraps. But the more ball they have, and awfully we're just handing the ball. Like there, yeah. there's these chips, short little chips, chips from the, the goalkeeper. I don't even know the goalkeeper's name, but he was chipping the ball out. And next thing you know, Westmead were away. Offley were putting on total pressure. Um, and no forward really wants to put on a whole lot of pressure. So over time, if they keep getting those little chips away, forwards are forwards. They're there for a reason. They're not there to be working, they're there to be kicking the ball with a bar and and uh they eventually start overrunning us too, I think. Um, so I think if we need to make sure that we get really high up on them. Don't allow them get those short kickouts. Don't don't make their life easy. Make them kick the ball at long. Make it a contest, and I think we will win the contests. Mm, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. And yeah, like that's what I'm saying. And obviously, like I suppose the great thing is, I think I'm saying off the air to you, like it's great that we have had that. You know, with the three weeks since the Sligo games kind of brush up and anything and. It's probably been a blessing in disguise for Mickey Graham and Ricey and Shawnee and all the boys involved in the backroom team there. So it, it's been great that, you know, they've had all this time to work on, you know, how we're going to maybe stop John Heslin and the likes of Lorca Dolan, Luke Lachlan, Sam McCart and Ronan O'Toole. So no doubt the uh, trend for the last couple of weeks has been lots of homework. I would think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, especially the area of when they do have the ball. Um, when, when they have the ball, what, what position in our, our midfield are trying to get to? Um, I said I felt our, our middle was very open and against Westmead if our middle is open they'll run straight through the middle of it so we, we have to make sure that we get our midfielders back in position to actually make stops and make make life difficult um, otherwise well, we want to run into a lot of bother um, our half back line uh, was probably a little bit missing the last day in, in, in regards to stopping the lads actually coming through it, it felt like Sligo had their, their run on us uh, whenever they want to come through there, so and I think Westmead are better than Sligo in that respect. So yeah. but that, that's why I feel that the kickers are so important. I just think that Sligo could cause us off a bother if, if we don't get to grips with their with their running game. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. And I suppose the the million dollar question, and obviously you know Ricey no doubt has a couple of plans for this. But who are you reckoning will pick up John Hesson? I know you kind of said Jason McLaughlin, but would you be surprised maybe? Or sorry, you said Killian Brady, but maybe Pork Faulkner? Or do you think Killian Brady's dead cert? No, no, it's not dead cert. No, that's just my opinion. Or uh, well, yeah, no. well, your opinion, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, um, like if you put fourteen number fourteen on his back, then Pork Faulkner is the automatic automatic person you put on him. I I just feel that you need to be so disciplined to actually mark him um, that Killian is so used to doing those kind of jobs and he has that discipline of not turning off or tuning out um, all, all Heston needs is two steps and if he gets a little pass he kicks it over the bar so it's a different mentality of defending it's not a Heston's not looking for a 50-50 ball kicking in and a catch it well from the last day anyway definitely not um, he might have done that a few years back he's looking for those little balls coming on the loop where if you're not actually marking him tight, he's going to get those two or three yards. He's going to get the shot. And then he looks like a class player. And he, he is a class player, to be fair to him. Uh, I just think the kid in the gunner is, is used to doing that kind of job. He did it on Pride and Brady. He did an excellent job. Um, and it's a different it's a different mentality of defending than your, your normal, I suppose, uh, def, let's say your fullback play. So, yeah, I just think that I, I would put Killian on. I'm not saying that Mickey will. Um, 
And I just put him on for that reason, for the discipline of, of, of staying with him everywhere he goes. And I'm not giving him, even because you look at the last day, John Heston actually came out the pitch. He got on ball, he set up play. He was so instrumental in everything they were doing. Um, I, I would just, yeah, I, I'd, be, I'd be wary of him. Yeah, no, and it's interesting to make the point because obviously Killian would stick to that task. And I suppose if you had Pork Faulkner, Pork does like kind of getting out the pitch. He does like supporting the play. He might be a good man for even a point or two. And obviously Jason McLaughlin, well, I feel the last day probably was man of the match. I think he just had a terrific game. And by the way, what a servant. Um, you know, so I think it really could suit Brady. And then maybe Faulkner could drift up the, drift up the pitch a bit if the score, if, if, if the time allows it, I suppose. Yeah, and Pork's done that really, really well for us this year. Like he, he's come off our kick out a few times where next thing you know you see number three running up and he's he's ahead of 10 of our players he's fit as a fiddle yeah yeah so that that's an important part of his game he loves that freedom I don't think that Hessner would by him marking Hessner would give him that freedom to play the way Park likes to play which is trying to cut out play reading what's going on um, being the ultra the ultra I suppose um, team player and helping everybody but not having to focus totally on, on one person Whereas Killian, to be fair to him, is he's used to that, and, and it, it's not easy. Um, but he's, he's he's very very good at. It. Um, with Jason McLaughlin, then I I said Ronan O'Toole needs to be watched at centre half forward. Again, we we probably need somebody man to man on him. He's he's really really good, and again he set up an awful lot of play against Offaly. Uh, very comfortable on the ball. Jason is so disciplined. He never lunges. He's always there. And when you make that one little error, he'll knock the ball out of your hand. And as you said, the last day he was outstanding, to be fair to Jason. So um, I, I would put Jason on Ronald Tool again. Mickey might do that. Mickey might put us on a half back on, on Ronald Tool. So it, 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 it all depends on what way the manager will see it. But I just feel that those two lads are so vital for, for, for Westmead that we need to, to nullify them. Ray Kinellan, um, obviously Ronan, like what a player, he had a bit of a stint in the AFL and he's just a towering midfielder and I think some lad was saying, saying to me earlier in the week that him be Tomás Gallagher could be an unbelievable matchup if it does happen. He'll take watching this weekend. Yeah, yeah, Ray Kinellan, I think Thomas would have beaten him in the air and watched him. Um, yeah. But I think Kinellan could cause his problems going on the ground. Um Yeah, he, he's quite mobile and he gets across the ground really easy. Thomas will cause his prime problems going the other way. It's just that I suppose we need to be tuned in to Canel and get in maybe behind us. Um, yeah, it'd be a great battle. Thomas is a brilliant player and, and so is Canel. And so, um, yeah, I, I think Thomas will beat him in the air, though. I think if, if we can put keep the ball to the contest, and I think I think we'd be happy enough if, if, if Canel is running into space and winning ball in front. I don't think that'll suit Thomas as much. Um, like they say, a little 45 meter chip kick outs. That won't suit Thomas if it's pumped 50, 60 yards. Uh, and Thomas gets a chance to, to get a read on it, I think we'll be fine. I think I think he'll he'll have the, the measure from that department. Fair enough, fair enough. I suppose uh, moving on to the calf and end of things, and obviously we we're touching on uh, Ray in between the six, he had a, a terrific um, you know, tall cup so far, and obviously long may continue into the finals again. But we have to touch on uh, Jason McLaughlin. I think um he's he's just been a terrific server and rolling. Obviously, you played many years with him. Uh with Cav and uh, I, I tweeted um, just after the Sligo game or during Sligo game that he's just been such a terrific servant. He goes about his work in such a quiet manner, he's been there the whole time. Probably hasn't got the credit he deserves because he maybe not a forward to a degree, but what a man, what a player. Yeah, he's a brilliant lad. Uh, a lad you, you, you want on your team, as you said, he's, he's like the, the silent assassin. Says nothing, uh, doesn't say anything to the opposition, doesn't even try to be any way kind of nasty or physical. He just plays his football the way it, I suppose you'd be teaching your under sevens or under nines to play football, is tackle the ball and do all the basics really, really well. And he, and he does. He does everything really, really well. Um, and he's just a great lad. Yeah, we're lucky to have him in Gavin. Ten years in the bounce as well, Ronan. Obviously, he he broke on in 2012, and I think he just remember the game against Kerry. I think it was he on the gooch that day, or like he he done a pretty good job on him even. So it's it's a real testament a testament to the man, and obviously to have that career. And I think he, there's another lots of years probably left in Jason if he keeps his body right, of course. So um, he he's just been brilliant. Yeah, he has. Yeah, and as you said. Doesn't really matter who, who who the player is. Um, Jason, yeah, he'll go and he'll mark them, and uh, he can do a brilliant job one little bit too. As we've seen, he's able to, well able to kick a point. Um, he's well able to just set up plays. He's, he's he's catching kickouts now as well. He's yeah, he's he's definitely he's becoming the all rounder, and yeah, it's great to have him. Absolutely, yeah, and I suppose. 
Pork Faulkner, uh, Ronan, like all star in twenty twenty, and look, it'll be a huge task for him this weekend. Whoever he picks up, and it it'll be great to see him uh, having a big game. It, it, he's been absolutely influential to Cavan in the last couple of years. It's it's great to see him doing so well from a proud uh, club in Cavan there, Kingscourt. So you know, he he's just been uh, brilliant for Cavan in the last couple of years, and hopefully his form will continue this Saturday. Yeah, he is, and he he's the kind of fella you, you want on your team again because. He's just wholehearted. He reads the play very well. He cuts out play really well. He drives forward. Um, he's all there. Yeah, he's just a great, really good lad. Um, and as you said, he's the kind of player you want on your team, whether it be at three, six, eight, wherever you, you actually end up playing him. Um, he'll give you everything. And that, that's all you can ask of any man. You can be guaranteed that Porrick will, will give everything no matter I suppose, what number of jerseys he's wearing or what colour jersey, whether it be Cavan or Kingsford. I suppose obviously yeah, Kenny Clark getting his the hundred appearance against Sligo the last day out, and that's a uh, serious going from the man uh, from obviously Shercock. He's been a great leader, Mister Verstyle as well. He really can play anywhere, and like he'll obviously be playing a pivotal role uh, this Saturday. So we will uh, need Mister Clark and another big performance from. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, a, a brilliant defender, a really really good defender. I, personally, I'd be, be playing him full back. Um, he's outstanding in the full back line. Um, yeah, where would be the best position? <laughs> yeah, full back. I mean, when he marks your Reno Neils or your uh, David, Barry uh, Mangani, Paul Ganey, any of those lads that he's marked before, even Murphy, he does a pretty, to be fair, he does a really, really good job on them. And that's his, that's what his strength is. His strength is how good he is at at a at man to man duels. Um, and I suppose we're playing him out, out the pitch a little at the moment. Obviously, he's really good at there as well. But I think his his main strength is his full back or is, is doing a man to man duel on, on one of those bigger type lads. Great to see Kieran the Hall of Brady back as well, Ronan. Um, obviously got a bad injury last year, and like it, presumed he is he's kind of fully he is fully fit now, and he, he's been such an influential player, obviously for Cavan as well. So Kieran the Hall of Brady from Arva, you know, we, he 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 need to be top of the pops on Saturday if Cavan have a, have a big chance. Yeah, it, it's great to see Kieran back and fair play to him. It's, uh, thanks be God, I, I never had an injury like he did, but um, by all accounts, it's very hard to come back from. So fair play to him for getting back and, and getting back on the team again. Um, yeah, he's a brilliant driving force. And mm. if you think back to 2020 when, when Cameron were winning the, the Ulster title, and I can vividly see him here in the, the All Ireland semi final against Dublin, like, he was the driving force, to be fair to him, from our half back. And he was yeah. the one breaking the lines. Um, and it'd be great to see Kieran back to that level again. So, yeah, it's great, it's great to have him back. Gowna always has rep- representation on a on a cabin team, and he could be he would be remiss if there wasn't a Gowna man involved. And obviously Connor Brady, like he's he's a he's a strong strong man. He gets up and down the pitch. He's a great game against Sligo. Last out, left foot, right foot, loads of confidence in himself, Ronan. So you can't have a Gowna, you can't have a cabin team without a Gowna man, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen him kick with the right foot, but he kicked a bottom of a point with the left. Um, <laughs> I, he's a really good player. Um, I'm just giving him yeah. loads of praise in case he sees this. <laughs> um, he possibly is well able to kick with the right foot. I've just never seen it. Uh, no, he's he's a really good player. And the the, the one common denominator that you're mentioning here, um, John, between all those lads, every one of them lads can play midfield and have played midfield for the club. And and to me, that's a massive uh, point for Calvin because. Uh, we now have, in the first half against Sligo at 11 was it yeah yeah but we, we now have probably 8 to 10 club midfielders playing on our Cavan team which means we are huge and, and how like from as long as I can remember Cavan were never too big especially when I was playing anyway. um, it, it's great to have big men and they're well able to play in any of those positions uh, right throughout the team so Connor Brady's another one. Play midfield for Gowna if, if you need him to play there. Play half back. He's a driving force. He's a brilliant runner with the ball. He breaks tackles really well. Um, I kicked as you said a great finding at Sligo. So, yeah, we're lucky at the moment. We have we have huge men and, and mobile men, which is great. Obviously, the midfield partnership of uh, Tomás Gallagher and James Smith, and we know James Smith probably will go inside on Saturday. We, we'd imagine so. It will depend on that midfield uh, battle goes against West Me, but. Ah, oh, like look, Tomas and James probably are the two best midfielders in Cavan have been, and you're after naming some great club midfielders. But when them pair of boys get go get going, rolling, there's not many that stop them. No, there's not. There's not at all. Uh, the two of them are brilliant in the air. Uh, brilliant, also extremely fast on the ground, which is oh, rare. Yeah. Um, when they get run at the goal, they, they probably won't be stopped. So yeah, I, I would feel that 
between the two of them, um, if we could get a, a mismatch in our full forward in, in their full forward line, um, sorry, their full back line, even, and we can get a kick pass inside to to a James or a Thomas, that's where we're going to really uh, pay dividends and, and potentially could get goals out of it. Pull their full back, which is the big lad, the, the their captain, um, Kevin McGuire. McGuire. Yeah, okay, Maguire. If if Paddy's on him, just drift him out to the wing or bring him out to centre half forward or wherever it is. Let Thomas or let James or one of those drift inside. And once we see them in there, realize that the mismatch is now on and the kick pass is on. And as I said, we we have done it quite well. We've tried it against we did really well against Sonny Goal. Even the last day against Sligo, it was great to see Thomas start inside. Um we didn't actually get any kick pass into him, but even the thought, the thought process is there to get him in there. Uh, as I said, they're huge men and brilliant ball winners. And it just gives us, within two kicks from Raymond to midfield to midfield to inside, we could have a mark or a goal chance, which is it's unique in today's football. Mm, yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for the high ball in as as, uh, as our ma found out against Galway the last there. So I think there's a lot to be said for it if you definitely have the big men and obviously moving on like to the kind of forward line, like there is lots of lads like options there, and we could switch it around. It's obviously uh, you know what, having a quick look at the Cavan Donegal Gold program here. You got Connor Moyne at half four, but he obviously jerked the bat, Grove and Karen, Jared Smith. So that'll obviously very old and presuming Ocean Karen probably will start in the half forward line. But uh Big G Rowland, you would have played with him for many years for Cavan and um he's just he's a phenomenal player, he's been on the bounce for so long at this stage. So a big game expected by the big G this Saturday. Yeah, a man, a man mountain. Um, a brilliant man to win kickouts, um, and a brilliant man to kick a point. So there's two elements there. Like it's kick the ball out to him, and then when the ball is in play, make sure you pass him the ball when he's running at the goal. Uh, he can't stop him. You actually can't stop him. He he's so big, he's so strong, he's so fast. Um, left foot, right foot. As I said, if he's running at the goal, he's virtually impossible to stop. Uh, kickouts then as he gives Raymond a great option because I suppose you you have Thomas, you have Groge. Uh, you have Killing Clark, you have, you have James when he comes out. You have huge men, and Grode is just an, another one and probably one of the best ones in, in the air. So, yes, it's brilliant to have him, and he's bringing a great servant to Cavan. you see when maybe Grode's kind of drifting out the field, and maybe you see him obviously like out in the midfield area, but sometimes when he maybe he's drifting out around the half back line, midfield area, like where would you kind of like Grode when you see him when he's doing that throughout the game? Where would you would you like seeing him there, or would you rather see him inside a bit more? Like if you were obviously a long line for Cavan, where would you like to see kind of Grode playing more often, I suppose? Uh, well, I'd like to see him coming onto the ball, heading for, heading for the goal. So Definitely not the half back line. No, I'd be telling them to get up into the kind of midfield half forward line area, and and it's a strange kind of way. But I, I'd nearly tell them don't get involved really, Roach, until the ball gets either in that. Um, yeah, going to be passed inside or going to be passed to you, um, because the less he's involved, the harder again, the harder he is to mark, and all it takes is one hard run, uh, heading for the goals, and next thing you know, it's a left foot a point, or it's a right foot a point. Uh, probably too often we've probably tried to play through him um, and that means he's getting the ball with his back to goal a lad absolutely hounding him There's probably a second lad coming in uh, we don't get the best out of him because his back is at the goal as opposed to getting him facing the goal and that's what that's why I felt against Sligo it was great to see him put, uh, driving at the goal getting the ball facing the goal and said you, you can't mark him he's brilliant like he's a left foot right foot he's full of power he's he's he's, he's pace to burn Um and it's it's playing to his strengths, uh, and that, that's what I I would I'd be trying to tell the captain is try and get Groge the ball running at the goal. Um, don't be don't be passing to him with his back to you. He's too much work to do when he, when he does that. 100 plus caps for Cavan at this stage as well, Ronan. So he's just been a terrific servant. And obviously, a man, he's been on the bounce since uh, 2011, pretty much like uh, Jason McLaughlin. So, probably a product from the under 21 success, Ronan. So he's been a fantastic servant uh, to Cavan, and he's another couple of years left, him, I'd say. Please, God, yeah. It'd be great to have a coach for a few years. Um, yeah, he's been brilliant. And even though he's on 20s, on 21, even sorry, back then, he was, yeah, he was brilliant, like to be fair to him, catching ball, kicking points. And there is his two biggest assets. He's brilliant in the air. He's brilliant at kicking points. Let, let's use him to his best assets. Absolutely, absolutely. I suppose uh, the fitness of Connor Moyna, um, like I think he he wasn't fit for the slide or he came on against Sligo, if, if we remember service correctly, he didn't play against Romana. So, like, do, do you start Connor Moyna if he's not fully fit, or what would be the what would be the verdict on it? 
Um, yeah, he was he was on on the line against Down actually. Um, so that's the, the very very first one. The 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 biggest thing that Connor gives you is that he to be fair to him, he looks inside to try and kick past the ball to to James to Paddy. Um, so we get early ball and, and if you look at James's chance against Donegal, where um, Mor- not Morgan, uh, Patton got his fingertips and yeah. put it onto the crossbar. It was actually Connor kind of Wine kicked the ball into him. Yeah. So that's definitely Connor's biggest strength is that he looks forward and he's looking to kick the ball inside. Um, and when you have a James Smith and a Paddy Lynch inside, as I said earlier, we need to be kicking the ball to them, and especially Paddy, especially, especially James, because he's such a ball winner. So yeah, Connor definitely brings that asset. Um, to our team and yeah I, I'd be looking at him for that reason yeah mm-hmm. I, I don't know if he'll, he'll play probably the fact that he played a few minutes the last day he probably won't start but he, he's definitely a benefit to us um, in that regard yeah I suppose I was kind of looking at the uh, four, the four lines or against uh, Sligo was Oshin Kiernan Grove McKernan Jared Smith Mark Riley Paddy Lynch Key Madden and then against Donegal you had Jared Smith Grove McKernan Connor Moyna Cormac Riley Paddy Lynch and Keane Madden so I suppose kind of looking and I suppose this is you know the, this is very important because obviously these lads will uh, end us with, kind of win us the game so like what would if you were obviously a long line for Cavan which what would you be going with for for Saturday? I think you, you can't look beyond Jared Smith and Ocean Kieran. They both of them have been outstanding in, in the half four position. And if if you look at the goal chances that Sligo had, to be fair to the two lads, they were the two lads back actually stopping the goals from actually happening. And at the same time, they're also getting forward. They're chipping in with points. I think Jerry got three, three points the last day. Ocean got, got one, if not two. Mm. Um, so they're the complete half forwards at the moment. And both again could play at club midfield. They're huge men. We're, we're lucky to have them. It's great. Mm, yeah, I think Oshin Oshin definitely deserves his start. This would be so interesting. Um, obviously Paddy Lynch. Um, he's probably been the forward we've been absolutely crying out for for the last couple of years. Ronan, it just looks like he has the X factor. I know he's been relatively quiet in the Cup, but I think the Sligo fullbacks done a terrific job on him. He's been the man we've been waiting for, Ronan. Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, I remember seeing him in 2018 as a he's probably only a 17 or 18 year old, and he was. He's a huge man then, so I can only imagine. I haven't seen him up close in a while. Then. Oh, he's a brute. Yeah. yeah, I can tell you that he's a brute. Yeah, yeah. So he'd be very, very hard handled, and he has the finesse of a of a corner forward. So he's a huge man with with, with great finesse. Um, it's great. It's great. It's great to have a full forward who's who's able to win the ball, turn and kick a point, um, and do so at, at his ease. Uh, as he said, the last day against Slavia, the man was really, really good on him, and, and he's obviously going to be more of a marked man now because of, of his exploits. In the Ulster Championship, so we need other players then to to kind of I suppose to step up uh, if, if Paddy's in, let's say not hitting the, the highs of the Ulster Championship, but he is a great player. Yeah. I think for, for general play against Sligo, I think Paddy was pretty good. Like, like don't, he, he, he scored an absolute whip for point in the first half, but he set up a bit, he created a bit. So anyway, it was a quiet day at the office points wise, but from general play, I think he was pretty good. He was, he was, yeah. And I had that debate with another lad actually. Uh, I felt that. He was saying, oh, Paddy Lynch was, as t- people do say, unfortunately, typically, he's, he's no good. Uh, but, that, but that's, if people are watching the game, like I, I was watching the game, sorry, but, but I was watching the game from TV, maybe you see more, but like I just think people are very, you know, just throw the knife in and he's so quiet. But if you're watching the game closely, he does a lot, but oh, he doesn't score six, seven points. He did a lot, uh, Ronan, you know? Yeah, he was so important. Uh, and if you look at some of the points that Groge got, yeah, uh, I think uh, Paddy was... Probably on the end of three, if not four, assists for Groge. Um, yeah, he, he was winning the ball in front. He was doing the simple thing. Okay, he might have only kicked one point, but how often did this man actually take the ball? Often, I, I, I can't recall it really. Maybe once. Um, so it's not all about scoring. Exactly. Um, it, it, it's all about the team, and it was great to see Paddy bringing other players into the game. And the more he does that, the more space that he will actually create for himself because. Defenders will will kind of I suppose fall off him a little bit, and he get those easy ch- chances on to turn onto his right and kick a kick a nice point. Mm. I suppose like maybe a big have way of kind of saying, oh sure, like he, he's gone quiet in the Tottenham Cup. Will we see him again? But I really do think like we have to believe in this fella. He is the real deal. Like he done it against Donegal, warm summer's day in Clonus. That's the sign of a great player, Ronan. So I wouldn't just be. Uh, I give him. I give him the full backing. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, and. Yeah, there was two lads I picked at the start of the year. I was talking to a fella and I said, I'd hoped that Paddy Lynch would, would fulfil his potential and Oshin Brady. And I, I still think 
there's way more in Oshin Brady from Kinnegarry. Um, yeah, yeah. He's another player I'd love to see kind of getting a breakthrough. Um, he, he's, he's loads of potential mm-hmm. and he has that cut that you need, um, and uh, which is which is great. Um, he, he probably just hasn't fulfilled it yet, but please God, and maybe he's going to next year. He's young, he is young, yeah, yeah, he is young. But they, they were the two I would have picked out as our, our prospects. And to be fair, Paddy's done really, really well. I think Oshin will come, it's only a matter of time. Absolutely, and obviously, Martin Riley Ronan. Um, like, I'm, I'm kind of lost for words at the man at this stage. He's been on the bounce since what, 2007. You played against him, played with him for many and many years. What more can you say with the man? Yeah, he's some man, yeah. Did soccer, we played soccer together at under, under 12 with Badgers of Celtic. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's a great lad. Uh, again, he's, a, he's, a, he's the kind of guy you want in your team. He just gives you everything from, from working hard to, to tackling to coming off the shoulder for points. Uh, he probably he picked up a little bit of an injury there against, I wasn't chatting to him now, but against um, Sligo. So it'd be oh. interesting to see where he, whether he will be available okay. um, uh, against Westmead. But yeah, he, he's he, he's a really good player actually inside because he runs really, really hard. And he's so honest. And he's always he always gives you an option to to kick the ball to, which is which is brilliant for a, a player coming on coming forward from the half back line. I suppose like the longevity is as uh, longevity as well, Ronan. Like it, since on the bounce since 2007, we haven't seen many players like that these days. Maybe Michael Murphy's kind of booking the trend and a couple of others, but it's a real testament to the one. Yeah, yeah, no, he, he he's to be fair, he's a brilliant uh, brilliant athlete, and he, like even from minute one. He was so flexible. He never got injured. I know he ended up getting a, a bad knee injury, but like I couldn't tell you, Martin never got if, if he ever got a muscle injury in his life. He was just he was in peak condition. He looked after himself so well, and he still does, obviously. Um, and he's a testament to I suppose hard work and and looking after yourself and making sure that you're ready to go for every training session and every he's the ultimate professional every game. Um, and as you said, as a result of that, he's he, he's still playing and fair him. And like, I suppose watching all of that, you've been done for Calvin since uh, 2015. Like, does it nearly exhaust you looking at him? <laughs> yeah, he used to exhaust me trying to run after him. Um, <laughs> well, that too, that too, yeah. Yeah, no, Martin's, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a machine to go. Uh, I wouldn't be fucking myself in the same bracket as, as Martin. Definitely, I suppose. Uh, kind of looking on from, like, if the game is in the mental pot, which I have a strong feeling it probably will be on Saturday, uh, Ronan, obviously, the bench uh, against Sligo was Liam Brady, Chris Conroy, Luke Fortune, Niall Carlin, uh, Mike Largue, Conor Moyne, Ocean Brady, Stephen Smith, Ray, uh, Ryan O'Neill, uh, Thomas Edward Donoghue, and Cormac O'Reilly. So, Niall Carlin uh, from Kilcullens came on the last day. I think he had a brilliant game. So, you know, if the game is in the mental pot, which, as I said, probably will be Ronan from the bench, who would you be thinking, Mike, kind of swinging for Calvin? If it needs to be. Yeah, well, uh, Stephen Smith will actually play in the last day. Um, and I think he compliments Paddy and, and, and James quite well because, he, again, more than uh, Conor Minor, he's always looking to get a pass inside, which is great. And that's the ball that you were talking about um, a few minutes ago, with John, where Paddy Lynch is coming out and winning and slipping it to lads coming off him and they're getting yeah. easy scores. Um, Stephen was at the heart of a, a good bit of that. Um, I, I like the way he plays football. Uh, so I, I'd hope to see him in the team for that reason. Um, whether he is or not, I don't know. Um, so I suppose him, if he's not playing, I'd like to see him coming on. Uh, Oshin Brady, I, I, again, as I said earlier, I, I'd love to see him fulfil his potential. I, he has so much potential. Um, yeah, so he's be, he'd be another fella. Nike Carlin, great lad, young, very, very young. Um, yeah. Great pace, uh, so hard, like really, really strong. Uh, a full career ahead of him. Another great lad to have on. Luke Fortune always does a great job when he comes in. Mm. Um, they'd be the kind of fellas you'd be looking at coming in, to, 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 I suppose, to, to see us over the line. I, I hope that we're not looking at them lads to come in and, and, and make the difference. Uh, I hope that we're looking at them lads to come in and just finish the game. Um, I, I think that you look at the other side, the Westmead's bench, if 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 they're looking at Ke- uh, Kieran Martin and um, Jerry Egan, they have, they have quality on their bench, to be fair. I forgot about that nearly, yeah. Yeah, so you kind of want to be three, four, five points ahead of them um, uh, coming into the stretch because I think if it's a one-point game, it'll be tight. It'll be very, very tight. Um, and I, I foresee that it will be three or four, hopefully, in you, uh, coming down the stretch and, and, and we'll just hold on for a, a two or three-point win. Absolutely. Uh, you like to look at Cormac Riley from Mullahorn, obviously, son of um, Damien, who won the Ulster. 
championship in 1997. Um, Cormac just very, looks very elusive, and uh, Ryan McCluskey is obviously involved with the Mullerhorn lads this year, and he, he's a big fan of Cormac. So, are you liking the look of him so far? Yeah, I am. Yeah, um, it, sometimes he does things that are a little bit erratic, but that, that'll come. Um, but he, as you said, he, he's he's well able to win his own ball, even though he's not the biggest of fellas. Um, he he's quite quick on the ground. He's a bounce about him. Yeah, I like I, I like the look of him, um, and I think he will get better with time. Absolutely. And I suppose like a word in the background team, and like I suppose like, like this like this year, like it looked like there was no stones kind of being left unturned. Un- un- and obviously you've Mickey Graham, Marty Curry, uh, Ryan McBride, Shawnee Johnson, John Denning. So like it's 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 all hands on deck. Uh, Ronan, obviously you would have played uh, with and against Shawnee, for instance. So look, great lads have involved. Obviously you worked. Um, obviously Marty Curry would have coached you with Castle Rahan. So it's it's a great backroom team. In fairness, it'd be a great time to be playing for Cavan, Ronan. Yeah, no, it is. It is, and the lads on the pitch. Um, are, are showing that it is a great time to be playing for Cavan. Um, I strongly believe that we would, we would probably win a lot of those quarterfinals that happened um, two weekends ago or one weekend, or whatever it was. Um, yeah, two weekends ago, and yeah, well, I, I I wouldn't be one bit surprised if Cavan were in an All Ireland semi final this year. Not one bit. Um, I, I think who, we're at. That. Who would you fancy just against? Just on a side note, from them teams. Yeah, I think we we would Cork, beat Armagh. Yeah, Armagh, Cork. I think we'd beat uh, Clare definitely. Uh, I think we would definitely be, be there thereabouts of Derry. Um, Gold is the same. Mm. Obviously, the top two, your 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 Dublin and your Kerry, might mm. be might be might be a stretch, but I think we're well able to compete with the rest of them. Um, and we're our, all of our lads. We're actually at, at, the, at the peak of our of our I suppose our our cycle. Our lads are. Both experience, both physical conditioning. You look at the team; they're in some nick. Um, I, I'd have loved to see them get into a prelim after winning the Tasha Cup, get into a preliminary quarter final this year, mm. um, like the Joe McDonough Cup does. And I think we will be really hard bet. Now, I'm not saying we win All Ireland, but I think we will be really, really hard bet this year. I just think next year, yeah, it's great to get into All Ireland after winning it. Mm. Um, but things change over years. Um, we're not necessarily going to have the whole squad again hopefully we do um, but you, you can't guarantee the same form I'd just like to i love to get into the All-Ireland when you're in such good form um, yeah, I, said, I, was, wouldn't, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't fear too many of those core finals um, I, I'd relish it really I think Cavan are a great spot yeah, and it kind of makes you think that like the blueprint, like you know, the, the game against Donegal it was a fantastic performance we were so, so close only for them goals and Probably obviously the tall cup we, we approached it really well and the, obviously the buy-in for it was really good so it was kind of a bit of like bursting the balloon kind of you know put it up against Tony Gold and then you've down in the first round of the tall cup like it, it goes to show we can get to them high levels that you're after talking about. Yeah, no, uh, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, it's just I suppose it, we are where we are. We're in the Tosh Cup. Please God, we win it the weekend. We've we've had a great journey so far. Um, anything can happen on Sunday. You're not guaranteed or Saturday. Sorry, you're not guaranteed you're going to win it. Uh, I feel we will. But as I said, you're not guaranteed, and ho- hopefully they they come out on the right side of the, the results this again. Chris Carl Sean, and obviously, uh, what well, have you made of the total cup so far, like so far? Like obviously, the marketing, the PR around it, um, it, it has been t- kind of taken seriously by a lot of counties. Maybe a lot of counties in the lads travelling in Cavan have had their complete full deck of cards from the championship. So the buy-in definitely seems to be there. It looks like it's here for the long run. Yeah, yeah, the buy-in is definitely there. Um, it was great to see all the Cavan lads committing uh, and giving it its full. It's full uh, shot because uh, obviously there are temptations there heading to America and, uh, and the likes. Um, but yeah, no, Touch Cup has been brilliant, and I think it is here to stay. I think the teams who have played in it have realised that yes, it is a good competition and it, it gives us an, an, another chance to win in All Ireland, and that's what it is on Saturday. It's a chance to win in All Ireland, and hopefully, Cavan take take the chance. Absolutely, fingers crossed. And last one, Derry Galway. Um and Dublin and Kerry on Sunday. So who who are you who are you backing for them two games? Oh, uh, I'm backing for Derry Dublin. I'm uh, sorry, Dublin uh, Kerry. If Conor Callan is fit, I I think Dublin will win the All Ireland. That's um, right. If Conor Callan is not fit, then I see Kerry beating Dublin. Um, Derry and Galway. That's just, that's an interesting one. Jeez, uh, I don't know. I haven't I haven't really thought about it properly yet, but. It's hard to see past Derry. I just think the way they play, it makes life so difficult. I can guarantee you Shane Walsh and David Comer are going to have their fill of it on the weekend. So you're looking at the rest of the, the Galway lads to step up and 
and to I suppose take the mantle. Um, I, I'm not sure if Derry have enough forwards. Um, they have obviously Shane McGuigan. He has got a brilliant run of it so far. He hasn't really been man marked, which is strange, very mm-hmm. very strange. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I foresee that Galway will will put a man to go everywhere with Shane, Shane McGuigan if he goes to the toilet. They'll be going after him. Um, and you'd, you'd just be looking at Derry's scores like yes the goals have been so important but they're not kicking an awful lot of points mm-hmm. um, so if you start curtailing McGuigan um, and then the scoreline starts reducing that gives you a chance I'm not sure if Galway are going to take them but I think the next game might be this, uh, just a stretch too far the Dublin or Kerry mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely yeah no, I think uh, I but think I the goal, goal, yeah. Kerry, and, Kerry and Derry uh, that's based on Conor Callan not been available if Con's available I think it'd be Dublin and Derry yeah, I shared the exact same thoughts of that. I shared the exact same thoughts of that. And just a brief word, is the game in a good place at the minute, obviously, after the quarterfinals last weekend and probably one good game out of the four. But like, are you impressed with the standard at the minute? Hi, I think you have to be. Like, the standard of, of, of athlete at the moment is phenomenal. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's the first thing. Um, like, You look at the top teams, th- teams are getting closer. And that's why I think Cavan are, are at the peak at the moment. They're in physical, brilliant condition. You have to be. If you're not, then straight away you're on. A, you're you're losing. Um. So, uh, it's it's that's the first thing. Get to the to get to the physical condition and then look at the football and the tactics and stuff. After you said that last year, Timmy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just think it's so so important at that elite level. Uh, if you're not at at the right physical condition over 45, 50 minutes, you might be able to compete, but after that you're gone. The hits, the tackles, the running, um. And that's why teams get blown out of the water. Uh, I think at at, at the um, provincial levels, just the different the difference in the, in the level of condition. I'm not sure if there's a huge difference in in football ability in between, you know, say your Dublin's and your say your Sligo's or whatever. I think if if they all got equal physical conditioning, then the games will become much closer. I'm not saying Sligo would beat Dublin, but there wouldn't be a, a 35 point win or a 30 point win those crazy results that happen uh, every so often and uh, so yeah that, that that to me is 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 one area that i think that most teams are, t- are trying to, to bridge that gap and you look at Derry, the condition they're in you look at Armagh, the condition they're in you look at Galway. it's great to see them getting to that level because now you know they can compete once they get to that condition yeah, it's, it's looking it's looking pretty good. The SNC uh, job in a county team seems to be becoming more and more important. I suppose the uh, last question, yeah, and last question as well, Ronan. Uh, what would be three top five players are you kind of paying in the gate to see these days? What kind of players would you pay to see? Well, I suppose there's a few obvious candidates at the minute, at the minute though. Yeah, of course there is. Yeah, um, Ashland, like over the last fifteen years, Michael Murphy has been unbelievable. Um, he's an immense footballer and always puts the team first which probably maybe detracts from his own performance at times, but oh, what a player and what a servant to the league always refer to him. Uh, at the current moment, uh, my two favourite would probably be Con O'Callaghan and Shane Walsh from, from Galway. Um, they'd be the two I'd be, I'd be looking to watch. And it's amazing that Con can make Dublin tick so well. Um, like it, when he's not there, you realise how good he is. When he's there, obviously, he, he is very good, but you probably don't realise how instrumental he is in, in everything that they're doing mm-hmm. um, and then Shane Walsh is just he, he's just I suppose he does some crazy things like some crazy bad things unfortunately for, against for our bad uh, yeah yeah but he has the ability to do the amazing um, to, uh, firstly he can kick off both feet he can do both off the ground he can run as fast as anybody in in, in the All-Ireland Championship he's quite strong he's brilliant skills He's so much going for him. Um, it's, sometimes his decision making is poor. <laughs> I, I take that all right, but he's great to watch. Um, so I suppose Conor Callan and and and, uh, and Shane Watch would be the two that I'd be looking at um, at the moment. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Roland Flanagan, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, the podcast is brought to you by Orgaretch.com and the Tech is Rogo Jama podcast to get 15% off Norgaretch.com and get the best skins, gloves, equipment on Attack Today, be attack minded. Roland, enjoy Saturday, man. Enjoy the last few days in Galway and uh, hope you get a bit of peace with the kids and get to put the feet up. <laughs> well done. Thanks very much. Good to hear Cheer. you. Cheers, sir. Thanks very much. <laughs>